Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And a special welcome to our online viewers joining us on Facebook Live. Make sure to check in and let us know you're here. And if you would like to give your tithes and offerings online, just visit our website, accucc.org, and click the Donate button in the top right corner. Or there's a link there in the chat that you can click on, and we'll take you right to that link. Today we are excited to welcome our guest speaker, Nancy Doyle from iCare, and we are happy to welcome back our guest organist, Mary Holiday. This coming Friday, August 27th, we will be having a youth trip to the Jacksonville Zoo for their Illumina Zoo event. If any youth are interested in joining us, please contact me, and I'll give you some more details on the event. Bring your sweet tooth on Sunday, September 5th for our ice cream social that will be in the fellowship hall after the service. See the other items listed there in the bulletin. Now, Teresa has a, an announcement for us. Well, I'm very excited to share with you that we have selected an interim pastor. She is Donna Cassidy. She's from Connecticut. And she's been in 13 different interims. She's very skilled at working churches through transition times. She fit our profile very well and what her strengths are and what we needed. So we're thrilled that she's coming looking like the first part of November. She's got two children. The daughter and her two kids will be coming with her down here. So she's just, she's also a registered RN. So she's got a, an empathetic quality that would fit in any church. She's been very well known in Connecticut and we are thrilled that she can come here. So we'll tell you a little bit more about her later, but we're just real excited that she's coming. We've been on several Zoom calls with her, and she's, she's just going to be so perfect for our church. Every quality that she has will fit. Arlene and Bill were here when they were on the search committee, and it was just Everybody was, was just so thrilled with her, we could have hired her the first time we spoke with her. But uh, we, we spoke with her several more times, and I think you're going to be really, really excited to have her here. Thanks. Now let us continue on work with worship with our welcome song, Please Stand. Thine is the kingdom, and the 
the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture lesson is from Amos chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The second part of our scripture lesson comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him, saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will grant, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Please stand for our next hymn. parts of town, and income levels. 
We join together because we believe justice and fairness for all people is part of our faith. We heard that in the scripture this morning. But let justice roll down like a river and righteousness like an ever failing stream. So I'd like us to stop and think about that for a minute. Those are powerful images, right? A river and a never failing stream. Amos doesn't say that justice is a drip of water. He writes about it as something that's powerful and something that's constant. And that's exactly how our members feel about justice. We've worked together for that by following the example of Nehemiah in chapter five. And like Nehemiah, we gather people together with local officials who have the power to change things for the better. We call a great assembly of over 1,000 people together each year. And in that assembly, we call on our decision makers to make specific changes to promote fairness in our community. As many of you know, for a number of years, we have been working in partnership with our sister organizations across the state of Florida to reduce the number of children who are arrested for minor and nonviolent offenses. This congregation has been deeply involved in that work, and I'd like to share a video now explaining that horrible problem and what we've been able to accomplish throughout Florida by working together. Before we start that video, I'd just like to mention that if there are young children who are around, this, the first part of this video may be scary for them. It's not something that I ever considered or even thought that this would ever happen. My son was arrested. As you know, the state of Florida still has a major problem with over-arresting children and adults for minor offenses. In 2014, Florida led the country in arresting children, and we were shocked to discover that over 4,500 were children between the ages of 5 and 10 years old. Ridiculous. Three years ago, I watched my friend's seven-year-old daughter be arrested and put in handcuffs and taken away. This little seven-year-old girl has autism that was undiagnosed. They were ending up having to zip tie her hands behind her back. If the handcuffs won't fit because they're too big, the child should never be arrested. On the last day of eighth grade, my son packed his own lunch and brought a butter knife with a plastic handle to swipe up a mango for a snack and he off to school, not knowing that just 45 minutes later he would be arrested. Just in the past year, 10,000 uh, were arrested and ended up with criminal records that they would not otherwise have. Training and education, 
we can lower those numbers of arrests, we can encourage more individuals to get into to an alternative sanction program, because we think ultimately we're going to get better outcomes through the alternative sanctions than we are through the arrest process. So I want to just again thank you for the work that you're doing, the passionate advocacy that you have. Your, honestly, your organization is one of the best advocacy organizations out there that I've seen, uh, and that's why I'm excited to work with you all every year and look forward to working with you the next few years. In too many communities, local law enforcement officers are not being held accountable when they arrest a child who is eligible for a civil citation.
Let it make a happy glow for all the world to see. Now please join me as we sing and sign Alleluia. Thank you. 